Okay, in this video we're going to look at two more um, pieces of notation and terminology that go along with a hypothesis test. And actually, the title says two more, but there's, there's more than that. We're going to look at alpha and beta. Uh, we're going to talk about the power a little bit. And then we'll also talk about type 1 and type 2 errors, since that's really how these are defined. So when you're doing a hypothesis test, the unfortunate truth is that error is always possible. Just like when you're in a courtroom, there's two types of error that are possible. Um, first, you might convict an innocent man. Okay. Second, you might let a guilty man go free. So the first type of error is a type 1 error. And that is supporting the alternative hypothesis when the null hypothesis is true. In other words, convicting an innocent man. Saying that there's a difference between the evidence and the null hypothesis. Or that the evidence implies that the null hypothesis isn't consistent, isn't really true, when in fact the null hypothesis is true. And then the type 2 error is the other way around. It's letting a guilty man go free. There's probably a word for that that I don't know. So that would be not supporting H1, the alternative hypothesis, when the alternative hypothesis is true. So let's say we were doing a statistical test on a drug, trying to decide if this drug was effective. A type 1 error would be concluding that the drug was effective when in fact it was not effective. And a type 2 error would be concluding that the drug is not effective even though it's effective okay, for what it's designed for. Alpha, that's the probability of a type 1 error. And we use alpha because we can access it. Of a type 1 error. The null hypothesis is nice and accessible. Mu is equal to some value a. Or if you later we'll talk about the difference between two means, that difference is zero as a null hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis, though, is not as accessible. For one mean, that means mu is not equal to a. Well, then what is it? Okay, it doesn't say what it is. It just says one particular number that it's not equal to. And beta is the probability that we commit a type 2 error. And beta is a little bit harder to get at because this alternative hypothesis that is true is harder to deal with. Because you're just, you just know that mu is not equal to some value. You don't know actually what it is. Okay, so you should know what alpha and beta are. You should know what type 1 and type 2 errors are. Those are very important. So in a hypothesis test, here's our procedure. First, we collect data. Second, we're going to calculate sample mean, which I'll just denote in shorthand by x bar. Okay, it might also be that you need to also calculate the stand sample standard deviation, which is s. And then we're going to compare x bar to the value that we're trying to compare our mean to. Remember the null hypothesis is that mu is equal to a. The uh, sample mean is an estimate for the population mean. We saw that in model after model after model that the maximum likelihood estimator for mu or whatever the parameter was ended up being the sample mean. Okay, That's whenever the parameter is actually equal to the sample mean. So x bar is playing as a stand-in for mu, and we're comparing that to a to see if this guy, the, the null hypothesis, makes sense. Okay. Now, since we're dealing with x bar, right, that's a sample mean. We know what that distribution is going to look like, so long as there are many trials, so we collect a lot of data, and the data that we collect is independent, and identically distributed, identically distributed just means that we collect from the same population, then the sample mean is going to be approximately normal with mean mu, the mean of the um, population, and standard deviation sigma divided by the square root of n. That's the central limit theorem. 
right? That plays a very important role, the central limit theorem, in statistics. And central to that is this hypothesis testing. All right, so I'm going to draw a picture to um, illustrate where alpha and beta are in this whole setup. Since our sample mean is normally distributed, I can draw a bell curve to represent the distribution of that sample mean. And you'll have to apologize, I'm, or you'll have, oh, I, I have to apologize. I'm doing these by hand, um, so they're not going to look great. And I'm actually going to draw two curves here. And what these curves are, are the um, distributions for the sample mean, and I didn't mean to make this one wider. Let's see if I can do it a little bit better um, and not make it wider. That's pretty good, I think. This is the distribution of the sample mean. Now, for one of them, I'll have it be this one. That's the distribution of the sample mean under the null hypothesis. Remember, the null hypothesis is that mu is equal to a. So, x bar is going to be normally distributed with that as its mean. Okay. Now, if mu is not equal to a, it could be over on the other side. But we're going to put it over the, to the right then x bar is going to look like this. So this is x bar, I'll say sub mu equal to a, and this is x bar, and I'll even put mu greater than a, since we can see on the number line that we're over to the right. Now I'm going to use different colors here. Let's see, I'll go to red. So my red is going to be alpha, and alpha is the probability of a type one error. error. Alpha is the probability of a type one error. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, if we're trying to test whether mu is equal to a, we're going to compute our sample mean. And if our sample mean is too far from a, okay, for example, out this far in either direction, so if x bar ends up being here to the left or here and to the right, then we're going to say that mu is not equal to a, and we're going to reject the null hypothesis. In other words, we're going to support the alternative hypothesis. This red area, where these are your cutoff values, okay, that is alpha. That's the probability of a type 1 error. And we're only considering two-tailed tests. I'll talk about one-tailed tests a little bit in the text, but I really don't want to go down that. That's just another level of complexity, and um, th there are some theoretical issues with one-tailed tests. I'd rather just address the concepts with a two-tailed test here. Okay, so that's alpha. That's the probability of a type 1 error. It's the probability that if we're indeed in the null hypothesis, right, right there's a the null hypothesis, mu equals a, it's the probability that our sample mean looks suspicious. It looks like our sample mean is far away from a. Now, you might say, well, mu is equal to a. Why are we doing a sample mean? We don't know the sample mean. This is hypothetically. This is saying if we have a null hypothesis being true, then this is what our sample mean is going to look like. It might be that our sample mean ends up way out here, in which case it would be more reasonable, or it would not be very reasonable to conclude that the mean was actually equal to a. Anyway, I think I'm just repeating myself and not making myself any clearer. Beta is the probability of a type 2 error. And what beta is, that's the probability that if the null hypothesis is true, this is one particular null hypothesis, that whatever this value is, that's what mu is actually equal to, because that's the mean of our normal distribution for x bar, the sample mean. If the um, alternative hypothesis is true, then what's the probability that we still accept the null hypothesis. So beta is the probability of a type 2 error, and type 2 error is not supporting the alternative hypothesis when the alternative hypothesis is true. So the alternative hypothesis puts our sample mean in this part, in this bell curve. If these are our cutoff values, then the probability that the sample mean doesn't fall outside of those cutout values is this yellow area here. Okay, And that's beta. That's the probability of a type 2 error. And a very closely 
related ideas to power. Power is 1 minus beta, and that is the probability that we detect a difference that is there. That is present. And it's, it's not a constant. Just like beta is not a constant, it depends on where your mu value actually is. If, I, if mu were closer, then beta is going to be a lot higher, right? If, if our mean among the population is really close to A, but it's not equal to A, then it's going to be hard to tell unless we collect a whole lot of data. Okay, unless we collect a whole lot of data. And what happens to these bell curves as we, if we collect more data? Well, collecting more data doesn't change the mean. It doesn't change the, well, that's a bad way to say it. It doesn't change this peak of where the sample means most likely to be, because that's mu. It doesn't depend on n. Instead, what it does is changes the distribution. So if we were to collect more data, what would happen is we would get a skinnier bell curve. Now, since we still want the area to be 1, it would end up being taller. So it might be something like that for the null hypothesis. And then for the alternative hypothesis, it's going to be something like this. Okay. And that makes all these areas smaller. So the sample mean, if we increase the sample mean, or excuse me, if we increase the sample size, then that's how we're going to um, increase the power of test, which is the same as decreasing beta, the probability of a type 2 error. And in a homework problem, I'm going to have you address that. I'm going to have you look at how big of a sample size you need to have a certain power in a hypothesis test. Okay, so again, I hope this video was useful. Um, these are some difficult concepts if you haven't dealt with them before. And I hope that you can chew on this and maybe come back to it and chew on later and get it by exam time. Um, but remember, the main point is that we really get these concepts down. I'm not as much concerned that you can go through and actually perform a, a hypothesis test. And computers can do that really easily nowadays. Instead, our human minds are needed to interpret the result. Okay, so I will see you in the next video.